Welcome everybody to the Cyber Technical Track. Uh, this is EDR, MDR, XDR, out of many acronyms, one sure choice. Your speaker today is Chris Pavona. He's a Navy veteran and he's a senior uh, technical consultant for Elastic. Hey, good morning everybody. Uh, in the interest of expediency, I know lunch is what I'm backed up against, so I will try not to keep you here too, too long. Um, so as I said, we're gonna be talking about EDR, MDR, and XDR today. Uh, and out of those, like which one is gonna be best for your organization. So as mentioned, I am a 11 year Navy veteran. Uh, and if you're familiar with the movie Captain Phillips, that's where I was in 2009 for Easter weekend. Um, I started out doing satellite communications, moved into radar and navigation. And when I got out, I decided to tackle the tech world. Uh, so after a couple years, I actually got my first experience with Elastic uh, while working with the NASA space ground uh, system at NASA White Sands, uh, and that, that works with all their low Earth orbit satellites. Uh, we we're integrating a solution that would provide all their logging and security capabilities throughout the entire space network. Um, so I've been here for about two years now, I've been with Elastic for two years. I'm actually local to Eugene, so welcome, welcome to the home. So let's get started. Uh, what are EDR, MDR, and XDR? So if you're not familiar, EDR is endpoint detection and response, and that's a solution that captures endpoint activity and advanced analytics for real-time visualizations into the health of your endpoints, right? Clearly an important piece of your security posture. So some of those capabilities that you're gonna get with an EDR type solution is gonna be your endpoint monitoring and your event recording. Uh, you're gonna get threat hunting abilities and alert triage. And you're also gonna be able to look for suspicious activity uh, via detection and validations. Uh, a couple of the last capabilities you're gonna get. Uh, suspicious activity detection and validation. Uh, and you're gonna have actionable intel to support responses to any, any threats you may detect. So MDR is just managed detection and response. And all that is is EDR, but somebody else is doing it for you, right? So if you've got a lot of money, MDR is good for you. A couple of the capabilities you're gonna get there, uh, you're gonna get continuous monitoring and threat hunting like you would with EDR, but you're gonna get the added benefit of having managed investigations threat and alert prioritizations, and a guided response and remediation. So again, it's, it's those cybersecurity professionals that maybe you don't have as part of your workforce that are gonna help steer you in the right direction. So finally, what is XDR? XDR is just extended detection and response. So you're gonna build on a foundation of an EDR platform, but you're gonna extend out those capabilities because typically an EDR solution is gonna be worried just about your endpoint and XDR is a point where you're at a robust level that you need other considerations, such as a cloud environment, things like that. Um, EDR is gonna streamline that data ingestion. It's gonna streamline that analysis and all your workflows in, across your entire security stack. And that's gonna enhance your visibility around hidden and advanced threats that you might not have been able to determine with just an EDR type solution. Uh, you can collect, correlate, and analyze your data from your endpoints, your cloud workloads, uh, your networks, and even your email through various automation tools. Uh, one of the big benefits is you're going to be able to coordinate siloed security tools, uh, which will unify and streamline that investigation and remediation into that, uh, you know, cliche single pane of glass. Uh, and finally, you've also got the ability to normalize your data. And from an Elastic standpoint, we have what's called the Elastic Common Schema, and it's a standard that's been around since about 2018, 2019, uh, and that helps you normalize your data across various different vendor data sources. Uh, and that, that provides you with the context you'll need uh, for an overall holistic view of your security posture. So what you can't see is why do you need XDR? Uh, so let's, let's start with EDR. Um, the threat detection from EDR only focuses on that endpoint, and you're, you're gonna need XDR because you've got more than just endpoints in, in your security stack, right? So if you have, let's say, network traffic, your network traffic analysis tools are only gonna worry about that network traffic. So your security professionals are gonna be concerned with looking at the endpoint over here, looking at your network traffic over here, and they're gonna have to take time manually to, to self-correlate that data. So to cover the whole org, obviously you're buying several disparate products, you end up with this big conglomerate Frankenstein's monster of, of UIs to have to, to hop between. The ripples from that are that your data becomes siloed and you lose that overarching situational awareness. Uh, and those gaps will create vulnerability vectors for attackers to take advantage of. And we definitely don't want that. So XDR is gonna give you the ability to correlate that data uh, and utilize, like, for instance, threat intel feeds uh, that can be part of your solution. 
and that will increase your threat visibility. It'll ac accelerate your security ops, or right? it'll automate some of that action out from your workforce. They don't have to do this manually anymore. Uh, and therefore, it will reduce your total cost of ownership. And as we know, that makes the C-suite very, very happy. So if we look here, now, now we do need this. Uh, last year, uh, Forrester did a study and looked at the top security tech trends. And within those surveyed, uh, these 10 were, were the ones that they really wanted to focus on. Uh, I'm not going to read all 10 to you, but there are three that I'd really like to kind of point out. So at the top left, the built-in security raising the bar for tech consolidation. Right, that's going to be huge. That's, that's kind of what I was already, already alluding to. Instead of having to buy all those disparate solutions that you have to configure the security yourself, a lot of folks are starting to look at security on by default, right? Encrypting your end-to-end -end communication and obviously zero trust at the edge like uh, Steve was just mentioning. Um, then you have uh, one down, your, your SOC solution is starting to transform the way security operations works, right? So the old paradigms are changing, to, to use that kind of cliche term, but in order to keep up, XDR needs to constantly evolve and, and make sure it can cover that down. And finally, down at the bottom left, the cloud governance tech expanding to support the entire cloud stack. So again, the benefit of XDR over EDR is that EDR is only focused on your endpoint, and a lot of people are really pushing for cloud native so you want to make sure that those cloud considerations are covered and that it's as secure as it can be. Um, last year, about 60%, I think it was like 59 and some change percent, of the folks that were surveyed actually responded that they had experienced one or more breaches in the past year, which is, I mean, that's, that's crazy if you ask me. Um, XDR solutions and at this point are, are imminently positioned to be the SOC platform of choice as you move forward. Um, you've got meaningful telemetry about the alerts, and that's going to give you that context available for your analysts. And you're going to end up avoiding that a lot of data but zero insight problem, where when your data is siloed, you, you can't, as a human, correlate enough of that together yourself. Um, seams tend to run into this a lot, uh, but what they do provide at, at the seam level is um, a better method for long-term logging and compliance reporting. So bringing that all together, a really good solid XDR solution is going to utilize elements of EDR, SIEM, and SOAR, uh, which we haven't talked about, but just the automation of your security platform. So which of these is best for my organization? Um, obviously, I think we, we know that you should have nothing less than EDR, right? Being able to manage your endpoints is, is kind of the bare minimum at this point. Um, but if, if you're looking at how far up that scale you need to go, uh, if you want to stick with EDR, you're going to be in a case where you want to improve your endpoint posture and your capabilities beyond just simply having next-gen AVs, right? Um, and you also want to lay the foundation probably for a more scalable architecture as you, as you start to grow out. Uh, from an MDR perspective, not really much to elaborate on. Like I said, it's, it's managed for you, so you're going to get all those same benefits, but just somebody else is, is doing the heavy lifting. One of the, the benefits in an MDR solution where if, if that fits to your organization is if you're looking at maybe you want to improve the skill set of your IT team, right? And you don't have the bandwidth to support that, you bring in that MDR and they can help train your people up and, and, and get that maturity level up to snuff. Uh, but you can also stay current on, on some of the threats you might not be aware of because those folks are dedicated to doing that. And then finally, XDR, uh, if, if you're looking to uh, enhance that advanced threat detection, right? I, I think I've laid out a pretty good idea uh, for why XDR would, would be the way to go there. Um, but the big thing is multi-domain analysis, investigation, and hunting, all from a single console that, that again, proverbial single pane of glass. XDR is really going to provide that for you, and you're still going to get the benefits of that seam logging, compliance reporting, and security measures from your endpoints. Uh, another big problem you might get uh, if you find yourself with alert fatigue, right? Uh, because of those disparate environments and those data silos, you're having a thousand alerts from here, a thousand alerts from here, and they may actually be the same event, but because there's no correlation, you're not deduping any of that information. And now, you know, negative reporting being really what you want, uh, you end up getting a lot of false positives or duplicate positives and things like that. And now you're wasting time for your, your mean time to repair, right? Your, your analysts are having to sift through that on their own, and that, that's just a long, exhaustive process. I'm sure many of you have, have spent many an hour trying to sift through things like that. But most importantly, uh, XDR is going to 
allow you to improve your response times and improve your ROI across your entire stack. So Elastic can do that. Uh, part of the other reason we're here, uh, we have a booth over in the room, uh, so come by and talk to us. Um, I'm not gonna go through all these, but all the capabilities we've talked about from an EDR, MDR, and XDR pers perspective, uh, we can cover for you, we can work with you to, to get that into your environment and build out a nice custom solution for you. Um, last year, Gartner has named us a challenger uh, for inside engines, engines, excuse me, a visionary for APM. So if you've, if you've developed your own custom code and you need to monitor that application specifically. Uh, we've also been named a niche player in the Seam Solution space. Uh, Forrester uh, named us a leader for cognitive search Q3 of last year and a uh, contender for XDR Q3 of last year. And then Q2 of this year, uh, we actually were named a strong performer for EDR. We actually, as of October 4th, I believe, that sounds right, uh, we were awarded the Cybersecurity Breakthrough Award. Uh, they named us the Threat Intelligence Platform of the Year. So a nice little feather in our cap. But accolades are nice. What really matters is the impact it has out in the world. So a couple, couple guys I wanna touch on. Uh, we're at 22 right now, so I'll try to wrap this up. Um, Hill Air Force Base out in Salt Lake City, our friends here in, in the West. Um, they have a big geodispersed data center that they use for the entirety of the Air Force. And they've actually brought in Elastic Cloud Enterprise to help out with DOD compliance across the entire life cycle of their hosted information systems. Um, they've got about 104, 105 information systems across this dispersed geo region. Uh, and they monitor the entire support infrastructure for all those information systems as well. Um, they're taking advantage of Logstash, which is our uh, data aggregate log shipper, uh, to provide horizontal scaling. So as they add new sites to this data center, uh, they can just very easily scale it out and the cluster is maintained there in Salt Lake City. Um, one of the big things that, that they've really focused on is because of the geo dispersal, they wanted to make sure that there's no data leakage across geo sites. So as these various Air Force bases, as these deployment sites are coming out, they're making sure that everything's locked down in transit. And of course, obviously, data at rest is taken care of back in Salt Lake City. Uh, we also have MISI. Uh, this is the Maryland uh, Innovation Security Institute. Uh, they're a nonprofit based out of Maryland, uh, tied very tightly with University of Maryland. Um, and they help businesses involved in the DOD supply chain to ensure that they have an accelerated cyber posture and that they're maintaining government compliance uh, for all elements of the supply chain. So why is this important? Uh, you know, all of our, our DOD folks, all of our branches, they wanna make sure that anything they're getting in the supply chain from parts ordering, elements, things like that, that those companies are safe and have a proper cybersecurity solution in place so that they aren't providing some sort of vector for adversaries to try to attack to get into some of these DOD networks, right? A lot of these supply chain manufacturers, they have accesses into various Navy, Air Force, Army networks. And so if, if they're uh, you know, vulnerable, uh, adversaries have a, a much easier chance than trying to break into a DOD network specifically and directly. Um, so MISI has, has utilized the Elastic Stack and Elastic Security to build out their offerings. Um, and, and obviously they're detecting and mitigating threats and again, the big one is the compliance of those DOD suppliers. Um, I don't have a slide for this one, uh, but there is another project in the Air Force. The reason I brought up these two specifically uh, is there's an entire Air Force effort going on that I'm working on with them. And we are actually looking at what we call the wheel of access. And that wheel of access is starting with the cyber chain, right? Starting with their endpoint protection and their network protection, but they're actually building out a security solution that's gonna take into account uh, all their endpoints, all their networks, their entire supply chain, uh, their RF chain, so all the radio frequency from the weapon systems and all the sensor systems of all, their, all of our aircraft and radar sites and things like that. And also their code bases for, they have a few software factories within the DOD uh, that, that develop custom applications. And so this wheel of access needs to be protected in its totality. Uh, so, for instance, uh, an F-35 goes out for a flight, that one flight is about 100 gigabytes worth of data that they're pulling off the aircraft. And so they're gonna have a very, very large data set, you can imagine, because that's just one type of aircraft for the Air Force. Uh, so they're actually gonna scale this out at Nellis Air Force Base in Nevada. And they're gonna be running exabytes of data. Um, they're, at, they're at a few petabytes now, uh, but they're gonna get up into the exabyte range on a year-to-year -year basis. And so, 
putting the elastic stack in place to provide that endpoint protection, to provide that data spillage protection, and also automate those security solutions is going to be vitally important to the Air Force. Uh, so that's all I have. Um, we've covered EDR, MDR, and XDR solutions. We've covered what's going to be good for your, your organization. Um, like I said, we've got the booth. Uh, my Pacific Northwest account exec, Connor, is here. He's in the back. Uh, and I'll be hanging out in the booth with him as well. So definitely come by and talk to us, and we'll talk elastic. And uh, thanks. Go Ducks. <laughs>